So it's interesting you say election risk, because what really has happened over the past week is that the market has definitively said that there is actually no risk for the election. You know, the debate played out such that people were really looking at this as potentially a win for former President Trump. And it just takes away all the risk and the uncertainty right around the election, like who's going to be the ultimate candidate. And that's what I think markets are doing, extrapolating for like what's going to be the future policy. I think no matter who will enter the White House, by the way, from my perspective, is that there will be more stimulus in the future. And yet we're having this slowing economy that's sort of perfectly landing, leaving this rate cut alive. And I think that combination of having not much uncertainty about the election at this moment against a slowing economy, yeah, it gives a lot of lift to equities. And that's what you're seeing today. Ben, I do want to get your thoughts on perhaps what that will mean for a sort of broadening out of these markets, but we can't ignore what you've mentioned in your notes, picking up on what the Wall Street Journal has been talking about uh, with this sort of Star Wars analogy. Um, you know, away from that, though, I mean, how are you reading how the markets are putting their money where they think their vote is? Because really what we've seen emerging, and I've heard the folks stateside talking about sort of uh, people building their expectations of a, a Trump folio and a Biden folio. So how, how are you looking at this? Yeah, it's a really interesting difference there because what's happening now is that there are sectors in the stock market that are not performing as well. Think of staples and think of materials and think of even retail and to an extent consumer discretionary. I think what's going on there is that people looking one that the economy is getting slower, but also that people try to anticipate that if it were to be President Trump, we know what he will do with trade policy. He will raise tariffs across the board, called universal tariff, that will impact those particular sectors. On the other hand, you have energy, you have financials, even to the extent healthcare, that are really performing extremely well. And I think that's about a story of like deregulation that's favorable for financials. Obviously, a lot of support for the energy sector, but also lower rates. And I think. The return difference between what the financials are doing, say, versus that group I mentioned, staples and materials, is interestingly implying sort of a path of rates perhaps from here. So the market seems to be on a track of diverging, but also implying a rate path that potentially would be substantially lower, say it would be the, the election of, of President Trump, which, as we know, he wants lower rates. Um, on the other hand, it's also about this sort of tug of war between which companies would do really well under which administration. I think it's a bit noisy. The sector bets are the better way to look at. So clearly, financials currently are outperforming, say, staples and, and retail is, is, I think, a notable change.